How did a tire mechanic help me discover the why for Wacky? Good morning everybody, Lee Brower here and welcome to this week's edition of Meaningful Monday. I am grateful to be here and I am glad to be here. As you know or may not know, Wacky Warriors Against Kids Cancer, Warriors Against Cancer, excuse me, Warriors Against Cancer and Kids and Young Adults was created in 2008 by our son Nick who was living with cancer. For four years, one of the Keystone events was a softball tournament, and he was the spirit behind it, meeting with every single team before they left, giving them each shirt so that everybody was a winner. And after he was gone, it kind of faded away a little bit. But Lori revived it when she, Lori, his mother, revived it when she came up with the idea to assign a cancer cutie, or a cancer, cancer captain, a young child living with cancer to each team. So each team then that joined the tournament, now this became a huge tournament, 40 teams, etc. I mean, you know, up to 12, 14 fields at times. Uh, you know, it, it became a big deal with very professional teams, the very best teams in the state coming in here to play. And they would dress wacky. They caught the spirit of it. And so they would de decorate their own uniforms and there would be things on there dedicated to their cancer cuties. Their cancer cuties actually became a part of the team and a part of the tournament. They might even call the, call the coin toss or they might throw in the first ball. But each one of them had a, a poster. They knew what the kid liked. They would dress. So if the kid liked Superman, they, had, they might have had, uh, what do you call those, capes. You know, if they had something like one Disneyland, one this, just this last weekend, this was our tournament. That's why we were so brimming with emotion. But one team came in dressed like Dis Disney and the catcher had... Did, uh, Mickey Mouse ears on his on her cap on her hat, um, and these are just kids themselves playing for kids that are living with cancer. They adopt them. They become part of that. The coaches get involved. They meet the parents. They understand what's going on. They really truly become a part of the team. It's an amazing experience. You won't see this. I wish I could grab you all up. You won't see this at a typical youth sport events, where instead of the yelling and the cursing and the cussing, imagine umpires showing up with gold shirts. And on the gold shirts are not kids they're sponsoring, but there's the initials of a kid, a child, former cancer cutie that is now an angel. Imagine that emotion. Wacky warriors right on their uniforms. Imagine what that feels like as a team to be playing against other teams. You'll never see a tournament like that when coaches say, my life will never be the same. And they wouldn't miss this tournament. It's become that successful. And just experience after experience after experience has brought Lori and me to our knees. She makes it all happen. I, there's, there's no qualms about that. She makes it all happen. She's taken over Nick's passion. And Nick had a passion. He had a passion. We have a note from when he had, gave a note that he wrote to a young lady, a very special friend of his. And we just took an ep excerpt out of it. And I taped it to my camera because I don't know how to get fancy. But let me read it to you. He said, once upon a time, I was a young 18-year-old kid ready to graduate high school when I was suddenly diagnosed with a rare type of cancer, a cancer that I knew nothing about, and yet it was living inside of me, trying to take my life, a cancer that has forced me to spend three of the past four years of my life in and out of the hospital getting treatments, a total of 24 rounds of chemo, 58 days of radiation, three surgeries, and a countless number of nights at the hospital. Through my many visits to the hospital, I was able to see firsthand how cancer affects so many people and their families. It soon became clear that I not only wanted to make changes in my life, but I also wanted to help others in my situation get through their trials. What he calls his happy ending, his joy, he says, my happy ending is not that I have beaten the cancer that I'm still fighting to this day. This was about five months before he passed. He said, my happy ending is the gratitude and happiness that I get every year when I get to send a check through my foundation to charities of my choice. What is it about this last um, event that we had, the softball tournament? Well, all you have to do is ask a few people. Why don't you ask Dave and Melanie, part of our staff that have been there many, many times, for whom we're so, so grateful, what it means to them. Why don't you ask Colby, who's the head of the, the group that runs it all, and ask what it means to him, or Troy, who came in there and used his clout and his ability to be able to get the fields for us uh, for, for next to nothing. And what about Kelsey and Bronson? What does it mean to them? And Jesse, what a warrior she is with her two daughters, Devin, and then Cambry, 
who was a cancer, cancer cutie herself, who has also become the photographer working at the event. And then you got the umpires, the players, the coaches, everybody that's involved in this, and their stories and their gratitude are immense. And so I'm starting to see the why behind Wacky Warriors. We know what the mission is, we know what, and that's to restore the health and redefine the well-being of adolescent, adolescents and young adults living with cancer. We know the how. We've been able to raise funds for children and young adult cancer research. We've been able to create sports-related awareness and fundraising opportunities. And we've been able to support or do outdoor programs that ultimately benefit children and young adults with cancer. We know how to do that, but what's the why? All right, here's this mechanic, and he, as I'm meeting with him and he's fixing my, some tires, and he starts to share with me that how on his truck, he had taken the tires off his own truck and given it to a young woman who didn't have the money to buy tires for her car. And he had a grin from here to here. Then it dawned on me, the joy of giving. Nick's letter, the faces of the people that do our golf tournament in Orlando that sponsor it, the catchers, Josh, the joy that he has from participating, all of the participants that are involved in it, those valiant warriors that did the rim to rim Grand Canyon just this last um, May, or March, excuse me, May 7th, May 8th, last May, getting my months mixed up. Those warriors that went out there and the, what they did and the adjustments that they made and those that supported them. Why? The joy of giving. So here is Wacky's Why. Wacky's why, Wacky's why is to enable others, other people, to be able to have the joy. To, all right, let me rephrase that again. I'm going to get it right. Our why is to help others experience the joy, even more so, the joy of giving. I'm not saying that right. I'm going to do it one more time. It's the joy to help others have even greater joy in the gift of giving. There we go. That's it. And if we can do that, then we're able to spread that joy that, Rick, that Nick talked about. Now, I'm going to let you listen to him yourself. He's got about a minute speech he's going to give you. This was done about six weeks before he passed. So enjoy. I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. There's always people that you meet, you know, that in the, especially in the hospital, that are, they say, why me, you know? And I don't think that should be the question. I think the question should be, you know, what can I do? that I have cancer, whether it be, you know, obviously I can fight this, or, you know, I can, I can raise money or raise awareness. Everything, everyone's got a trial or something they're going through. If I can change how they look positively on, you know, life or their cancer and, you know, not let the cancer take their, them over emotionally or mentally, then great, then that's what I came there. As long as I did for at least one person.